Hi, and welcome to Talking Cards. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Alex Nizek. And I'm Jake Fisher. As we draw to the close of 2022, we like to do kind of a wrap-up episode mm -hmm. of our favorite things, of the year in review, if you will. So that's what today is. So just to kind of qualify, I don't know if you guys had trouble. I don't know what day it is. Forget what year it is. <laughs> I had trouble, like, closing in on what was 2022 mm -hmm. and what was just this mm. ongoing 21 like what we that rolled in. tested and what was last year yeah two years I had ago trouple. maybe last couple of years are kind of a blur they are there was the mask days and then the non-mask days <laughs> it's that's all how you break together. it up i'm pretty sure you're not at a, i'm not at a video conference i think right <laughs> this is exciting. are you people real or are you just a figment <laughs> of my imagination but we're gonna go through and do some of our best and least favorite items of 2022 mm -hmm. And the rules are that I make the rules. <laughs> no, but okay. the rules are it should be vehicles we tested in 2022. Again, also hard to narrow down for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so let's start with the big ones. Alex, your favorite car that we tested in 2022. Yeah, super hard to, to mm. say, um, but I landed on the Civic Si, actually, oh. as my favorite. I mean, I wanted to choose the BRZ, but I just, because of how fun that is, but I think the Civic Si is just a better car mm -hmm. overall for everything, yeah. right? I mean, it's <clears throat> got great fuel economy, first of all, but it's also fun. Those yep. two things don't always go together. <laughs> for um, sure. It's got a fun engine that's just kind of, you know, exciting to use. The shifter, like most Honda shifters, are is amazing. It's mm -hmm. just like super satisfying to use. Um, and then it's just set up really well, in my opinion, for being a road car. It's not trying to be a track car. It's right. just a fun road car, good suspension. Uh, the limited slip differential is really fun to just use. And um, I also think it looks really good compared to the old Civic that was totally just like overstyled. This is like clean, simple, yeah. love it. And you notice it. I notice it when I see it on the car, either a regular Civic or SI, mm -hmm. but I also think you touched on that fun but livable. Mm -hmm. Like this is a car, unlike, I, I just said this in another episode, it's not the Evo where it was like, oh my gosh, this is punishing for every yeah, day. Yeah, right. It's oh. livable. Right. It's also not that expensive. And right. fun, expensive, good fuel economy, all those things don't typically happen together. <clears> so. There you go. Jack of all trades. <laughs> Jake. Fisher. I was going to go with the Lancer Evo. <laughs> <laughs> that um, was 2022. Oh, definitely no. not okay, 2022. Fine. Whoa. Right. It's not allowed. Um, <laughs> kind of very similar to you, the, uh, the G GTI, VW yeah. GTI. Yeah. For many of the same reasons, but, and I totally... I'm totally with you in the Civic Si, but in terms of livability, yeah. like the GTI is so much more quiet, there's oh, so yeah. much less road noise. Mm -hmm. So Softer. it's like, it's, yeah. I mean, One more level. Still yeah. super sporty, still yeah. all the things, and the shifter works nice and all mm -hmm. those things. But it's like, you could also just take a nice long trip with it on a highway and still be super happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not, it's not that, you know, noise that's constantly right. with you and it doesn't really give up really anything it's still super fun so right. it's awesome that we still have stick shift vehicles yes. that are available today yeah. you know that there's room in today's market for like it's really fun vehicles amazing that how are, many came through our test yeah. suite this year i mean yeah. quite a few yeah <clears throat> and more to come sure more yeah. coming oh, right yeah. here and it's funny i i just taught griffin i think i told everybody to drive stick on the mustang 1967 mustang <laughs> and i really want him to experience one of those and go it's really not as hard as the mustang right. makes oh it my seem gosh. i mean but anyway yeah they have the the auto downshifting oh or the the rev matching, rev matching thank yeah. you it'll re if you stall it you just push the clutch back in it yeah. restarts yep. the hill hold all these things that just make it yeah if you're into super that easy. make it even easier yeah yeah so he's been driving it and he's got it so i said if you can cool. drive that you can drive anything oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's oh, what yeah. i've told him but mine Genesis GV60. Okay. Hmm. Like yeah. everything I would want from a car, not just an EV. Like okay. it is such <clears throat> a nice vehicle mm -hmm. from the way you get in and it's got kind of that greenhouse roominess to it. Yeah. Even the funky sphere. I know it's gimmicky, <laughs> but it's everything That's I would cool. want from an EV too. It's quiet. It's powerful. I was already on board with the Hyundai Ionic. Mm -hmm. This just makes it a little bit nicer, yeah. and I really Drives like nicer. that car. A wheel drive, mm -hmm. like this would be a car when I have an EV. When EV is right for me in terms of I have charging infrastructure right, around right. me in Vermont and all that, that would be a car I would okay. absolutely consider, and I really, really liked it. Okay, pendulum swing, least favorite car. I'll start with you, Jake. Least favorite car or most disappointing. <sighs> Most disappointing. GV60 for sure. No, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, she doesn't know what she's talking about yet. This is hard. Mm -hmm. 
because there are a lot of good cars. Mm-hmm. Um, my least, well, I'm going to say most disappointing. Yeah, mine is You too. know, and it's not yeah. so much it's a horrible car, but it's disappointing. It's the Integra. The oh, Acura Integra. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, it, and it, it's crazy because it's like I was a big fan of the Acura Integra back in the in the 90s and when I graduated, and then, you know, the Integra GSR and the Type yeah. R. And, and what I realized what made the Integra what it was, mm-hmm. was that engine and yeah. that transmission and mm-hmm. that engine that revved to 8,000 RPM and was silky smooth. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. know what? The Integra was always kind of like stiff riding and kind mm-hmm. of noisy, but you forgave it. Right. Because it was almost like a super bike, you know, experience mm-hmm. with that. Now you take the new Integra, you kind of take that away mm-hmm. with kind of that, you know, the turbo and, 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 you know, our, our test car was auto yeah. and it's a little bit less forgivable. <laughs> you yes. know, it's yes. kind of noisy and it grates on you and maybe it's true to what it was. It's kind of like a spiffied up Civic. It mm-hmm. always was. But again, I, I miss, I miss what it was. Right. Right. You want the Civic SI. Maybe. <laughs> Might as well. And not yeah. the Integra. Right. I was disappointed in the Integra seats. I was hoping that, like, very specific, I guess, but you hope that it's just a more luxurious Civic that's going to be more comfortable, mm-hmm. but right. it really wasn't. Like, it, it was, looks good, I think, but it was kind of like I a Civic. Would just, it just kind of like a Civic. Yeah. yeah. Which I'd rather be in that. Right. Reliable and all of that, but again, disappointing. Mm-hmm. How about you? Alex? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, really hard, harder than the favorite, because um, most cars are right. pretty darn good, right? Um, so, yeah, more disappointing than bad um i chose the infinity qx60 yeah it just is kind of Mm. it's luxurious but it's also basically a pathfinder Mm -hmm. and you can get a pretty luxurious pathfinder for less money Mm -hmm. um so i think ahead in my notes we'll talk about stuff (laughs) Uh oh (laughs) Uh, yeah i just think if you're going to spend that type of money on on that type of vehicle you might as well go for something that's rear wheel drive based has a little bit better driving dynamics that Mm. type of thing i just didn't see the value in spending more um than the pathfinder on essentially the same thing to get the qx60 so not bad by really any measure but just didn't love it i think you you have a point that there really isn't bad cars i mean there's so much safety so much performance so Mm -hmm. much you know they're for somebody, just not for you. Right. Well, there are bad aspects of right. cars. Don't get me yeah. wrong. One's oh, interesting. Well, I, I think we both have the same answer because it's these luxury versions of the pedestrian yeah, vehicle. Yeah, totally. That's a good point. Aren't really any better, but you, they charge you more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's a trend we certainly Again, see. Again, you're reading ahead of my notes too. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> mine uh, was, for multiple reasons, the Rivian. R1T. Oh, I had a lot of, and again, not that it's a bad car, just a little bit disappointing. I would, it was so long in coming, such Mm -hmm. hype around Mm -hmm. it. It was going to be this, you know, first among that, this new strain of EV pickups. Mm -hmm. Um, It has so much innovation in it. And I am really, I love when startups bring amazing product, Mm -hmm. you know, and fighting against these massive or corporations that right. have existed for hundreds of years. So I really had a lot of um, desire for it to do well, you know, but to me, the issues with some of the early adopter type stuff, and to me, quite frankly, it's undrivable because of the region. That is disappointing. And the inability to change that. If mm-hmm. you have any passengers that are prone to motion sickness, don't buy a Rivian. Mm-hmm. It's even <laughs> almost intolerable for me as a driver. Mm-hmm. So I was just a little disappointed. That's not to say the Rivian won't be great next year. But for me, what we tested this year, I was just like, ah, oh, and it looks so cool. Um, but <laughs> I think you should make sure you spell your last name. So like all the nasty comments. I know, I know they're right. coming. <laughs> That's, the, the, the opinions opinion. expressed on this program are not those of Consumer Reports, but Jennifer Stockburger. So, yeah. But anyway, that it, it, was just it, a it, bit it, disappointing. It's very for much a pickup truck for Tesla yeah. owners. Yeah. And you know what's funny is that the people who buy that are going to really like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, if you're getting into it from maybe a normal pickup truck, you're going to be like, oh, really? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Never thought about this. Yeah, more luxury than utility. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go to a little more lightning round. We've kind of captured oh, the big stuff. Okay. And maybe it's not lightning because we can certainly talk about this stuff. <laughs> the Ford lightning we didn't talk about. But we didn't. Right. No. We talked about a pickup, an okay. electric pickup that I do like. But anyway. All right. Biggest surprise or disappointment. You can oh. go either way. Okay. 2022. Uh, okay. Uh, biggest surprise is how easy and fun it is to drift the electric Hyundais and Kia. <laughs> 
This is a the, very practical segment. The Ionic 5, the EV6, and <clears throat> your GV60 and my all GV60. will let you just get a crazy oversteer angle on the track and just hold it there and almost like it was designed to do it. Are it's they a track amazing. car? Could they be a no track way, car? No way, but... <laughs> They're incredible. They could it's be amazing. a track car. Yeah. Ah, see? Well, I mean, as long as, you know, it's not a long race. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, good point. No 24 long, hours of Le Mans. Long pit stops. Yeah. Um, actually, very much along the same lines. I mean, <laughs> just just where electric cars have gone. Like, I mean, look, we, we've been testing electric cars for a long time, and they right. used to be kind of like, oh, these little dinky cars, you know, right. and they're economical. They've all become crazy performance vehicles. And, and, and you're exactly right. You look at those, those Hyundai, the, the Hyundai Genesis mm-hmm. and Kia, like on that same platform, like, wow, these are crazy high performance vehicles mm-hmm. and not just really, really fast. But incredible on the track where you could sit there and like, you know, drive it like a maybe even more so like that a Porsche. I mean, right. it's like playful mm-hmm. on the track. Yeah. So right. so where where did this happen? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, maybe Tesla set the agenda that they're performance vehicles and aspirational. But it's like everything is a race car yeah. when it comes to EVs. Right. Um, to the point where if you're looking for a car for a teen, don't get an electric car because right. they're way too fast. And, yeah. and, and, you know, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think where the market has gone has been kind of crazy. Not like hybrids. Hybrids are like practical cars today, right. but mm-hmm. wow, the EV market has taken a turn. Yeah, that's for sure. But I'm not a drifter and I love the EV, the GV6. <laughs> oh, it's you also, it's I mean? really good at not drifting as It's well. really good at being just not a great car. <laughs> right. Not drifting so, is better. Again, I have to be the voice of reason. For me, this was, this is more a, <clears throat> an industry thing. It's all of the recalls and stuff around vehicle fires. Hmm. So vehicle fires are actually kind of at a low. You know, if you look back in history, there were tons more fires. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's funny. And when I worked for a fuel system supplier, we called them thermal instances. Mm. They weren't called incidents. Yeah, thermal incidents. And we were a fuel system. So we were always talking about thermal incident risk. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's not a crash, it's Mm -hmm. not a, a fuel leak, it's not that type of thing that we would have encountered. It's really kind of some design flaws. You know, things like push rod bearings or electrical shorts right and the fact that it's not happening while the vehicle's moving so it's not an engine seizing or a hot manifold getting fluid on it mm-hmm. or brakes catching on fire it's you better put this car outside <clears throat> in your driveway yeah because even when it's immobile and not on even though there's some electrical stuff still happening mm-hmm. there's a risk and it just surprised me how much um we talked about that and how many recalls not that they're happening but they have to capture it in right. these massive recalls it was kind of surprising yeah. to me i don't know if it was 2022 or not but the i just remember our chevy bolt sitting out yeah. like way by itself out on the track just far away because there was the whole recall with the you know the battery fires on those um yep. and so i think at this point it's been you know fixed but yeah that car just kind of sat for months because we couldn't drive it we still have a chrysler pacifica hybrid mm-hmm that we use for child seat testing. And each day he brings it in, puts his child seats in and puts it back outside hmm. because it's still under, right. under a it's recall a for that. But it, it seemed <clears throat> different yeah, that's a great to point. me. Different yep. to me. Yep. Okay, best dressed. Oh, I mean best looking. <laughs> best looking car. It's like our superlatives, superlatives from my school. Right, okay. right. Best dressed. Uh, okay, this is maybe underdog choice, but I'm going to go with the Mazda CX-50. Ah. Because it just... It's hard to make a crossover, mm-hmm. a compact crossover, <laughs> look good. And yep. I think Mazda's always kind of had, or for a while now, had a pretty nice design language. They look mm-hmm. kind of premium. Yep. And then you just get the CX-50 where it's got the wider fenders and yep. kind of that tucked in greenhouse look to it. And I just, I was behind, you know, somebody, maybe it right. was you, driving in one day to work and it was kind of, you know, you see the car in motion and I'm behind it. I was just like kind of struck by how good it looked. So, yep. you know, that's my choice. Okay. Again, Mazda. You never. I agree with you. The most <laughs> unsung hero, Jake. Yeah, uh, I, I, I like that choice. <laughs> I also say Mazda has like one of the best reds. Yeah. For some yes. reason, like oh, any CX-5 Mazda red, in, like, red, in oh, red yeah. just yeah. looks yeah. awesome. I think it's metallic, even. Yeah. So, it's got um, a little bit of flex. I was gonna go with 
the Bronco. Yeah. I mean, it just, it stands out. Like, it's almost a kind of exciting, like, in this day and age, you could build a car that looks so different. Yeah. When every other SUV is almost like, you know, there's a cookie cutter. Yeah. And, like, they're almost indistinguishable. And, uh, yep. 6, 650, you know, uh, not understanding. <laughs> but, I mean, but most of them just Thanks. look the Appreciate same. That. And it's, and obviously I make some compromises, you know, for the design. But, wow, it's just such a standout and, and turns, you know, whether or not you're into that kind of car or not. You know, you got to appreciate it's yeah. kind of true to what it's trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And all the versatility of configuring it like you would a Jeep. Mm -hmm. you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. Taking that, not yeah. that it was an easy process, but getting all the panels <laughs> yeah, off. Right, right. And the fact that it was bright yellow. Oh, yeah. But, it, but it's like, you know, you think back, like, okay, fine. These cars hawking back to like cars in the 60s yeah. and 70s. Today, to build a car with all of the safety now that, right. that's built in and, and, and efficiencies and emissions and all that. They're still able to pull it off. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. amazing. Remove and, right? all the doors, remove the roof, still have airbags and appropriate, you know, yeah. Yeah. pillar strength and all these things. But right. yeah, it's really impressive. And add off road ability mm -hmm. and all these features that allow off road ability. Right. Yeah. All right. So, mm -hmm. so mine, again, a little bit of an unsung, but I said the Ford Maverick. Looks alone. Really? Looks alone. Best hmm. dressed. And the reason I say it is to me, small pickup. We've mm -hmm. already said, does everybody need a big, big pickup? It's the best balance of a little bit of burliness mm -hmm. while still being a small pickup. And I think the Canyon in Colorado do it too. Mm -hmm. But you look at something like the Maverick next to like the Santa Cruz. Yeah, yeah, very different. One got it right, one didn't. One didn't. <laughs> one, yeah. my young, you know, my 18 year old son who thinks he's the coolest thing said, I would never drive that. And mm -hmm. I would probably drive that yeah. sure you yeah. know so i think ford struck a really good balance with the maverick mm -hmm. in making it a truck that a truck person would pick that truck because it looks good you know it's funny um motorcycles honda went in the market yep. there was a motorcycle market way back now we're yep. going historical but yep. honda came into the market and said oh let's come up with a motorcycle that like the kinder gentler motorcycles yes. that women would actually ride you right. know and mopeds and all that stuff and just changed it from like you know all these like biker gangs to yep. something hmm. like that's kind of what the maverick is doing it's kind of like you know you're you don't hardly versus your gold wing <laughs> yeah right, right. <laughs> quiet luxury no I'm sure yeah sure. gold wings no, i know what you're saying yeah Smaller. well but yeah, yeah. yeah. right yeah um, I'm going to cheat a little too, just to give a little, but the BMW i4 that we just oh, yeah. got, oh my gosh, that's cheating. That's yeah, looks, that's next year. Part of the, so the color combo on that, the oh dark green God. with like the tan interior. Yeah. I wrote it down. San Remo green metallic. Oh, of course. It oh. looks <laughs> so good. Anyway. Anyway. All right. Ready? Most likely to succeed. This is the car that you think has the greatest promise to succeed so for whatever you reason. Clearly, we're looking at my notes because Maverick, Maverick, for the reasons you oh. said, but this is, I see it as a game changer. Yep. Absolutely. Mm. For again, for the reasons you said, it's like they nailed it. Absolutely. Okay. You know, the fact that you could have a Maverick hybrid that gets 37 miles yeah. per gallon, it's sold out they forever. Didn't go there to the hybrid. But, it, but it's like, you know, Pickup trucks are really useful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you don't have to buy something you can't park at the grocery right, store right. or fit in your garage. Right. Or needs to like tackle the boulder course. Right, it exactly. It's not necessary. Right. It's such a smart, functional vehicle. And I think they are just, just scraping the surface right now right. because the opportunities, not just for Ford, but any other manufacturer to get into this. Look, you, you look at something like Let's throw Mazda into the mix, right? I mean, Mazda's not coming out with a full-size rear-wheel drive pickup truck any day. But you know what? They could make a CX-50 yeah. pickup. Mm -hmm. Back in the days when the Mazda used to have, like, small pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. You look at Toyota, they could build something like that. Like, you know, like those 80s pickup trucks. Like, yeah, sure. you know, yep. Marty McFly him. was driving. But yes. build that out Ooh, of, like, I a like hybrid, that. you know, RAV4. Um, like it's a huge opportunity and then go along with like, you know, the, the Raptor version of the Maverick right. and now the low rider <laughs> version of it. You know, I mean, there's so many opportunities mm -hmm. there. And they can. Can you imagine a Raptor Santa Cruz? It's not going to work, <clears throat> but no, a Raptor. I don't think so. Raptor right. Maverick works. Uh, game on. Yeah, game on. I like that. I like that. Most likely to succeed. Yeah, I'm going to choose one because it changes no game. Uh, <laughs> the CRV. Because, uh-oh. No, that's good though. <laughs> because it's, it, it. it just is... A nicer version of the CRV yeah. that yep. already sold super well. Yep. So, yes. a incredibly practical and predictable answer, but that's mine. I will sell <laughs> so many of them. Oh, yeah. That is exactly what I had. That yeah. is exactly what I had. Um, 
I used a term that Ryan uses all the time for all season tires, but it's the Swiss Army knife. It doesn't have to be the best at anything, but it's good enough at everything. Mm -hmm. And it's really good at access. And what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say the crazy idea of building more of what people really like. Right. You know? <laughs> so and not screwing it up. <laughs> yeah, surprise. It and, works. You, I, and I looked at sales volume. It only sold, other than pickups, other than the big three pickups, mm -hmm. it sold more than any other car except the RAV4 hmm. and pickups. And this was 361,000 in 2021. Like, and it's last year of production yeah. before Correct. they get redesigned. True. Correct. Nice. Yeah. I had a good choice. And I already said, people aren't going to be offended by it. People that have a CRV now are going to be like, just as great. Mm -hmm. Maybe even better. Yeah, and even better. it is. I do think it's the most likely to succeed. Okay. Best or worst interior. Go. Best uh, Mercedes C300. Oh, Ooh, that's a yeah, good one. Like and Mercedes. not only is it really nice, but it's also almost exactly as nice as the twice as expensive EQS. Yep. I mean, yeah. it feels just as nice, just yeah. as premium. Looks just as good. C-Class is the best Mercedes, in my opinion, anyway. But yeah, go. Separate, best separate best interior. Yeah, I really like the... Uh, yeah, ignoring that part. I really like the Hyundai Ionic, Ionic 5. Yeah. Okay. I just feel like cool. you get into that, it just feels different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like any other car you've been in. Like it just feels... Like you're in a living room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like everything's like light color. Super open. Super open mm -hmm. and just like refreshing. You get in there and you like you know when you're something really different and, mm -hmm. and you like and it. simple too and at simple. the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think you're onto something too with so many cars with that dark interior. Sometimes mm -hmm. when you get in something that's lighter and brighter, mm -hmm. it feels better. And I think I was there with the GV60 too. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that sometimes it's not about the whole package, it's about one element that's surprising and delightful. Mm -hmm. So I think, and I said the same thing. I said the Rivian, even okay. though, because- Your I, favorite car. They're six, <laughs> not my not favorite car, but things like that linen-y type of looking fabric, mm -hmm. or oh, that yeah, yeah. matte wood, yeah. you know, all of those things, yeah. it's some element. Honestly, right. I even like interior ambient lighting that you can sometimes change in some of the luxury I mean, vehicles. that C300 is loaded with that. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to put red on because it's the holiday right. time. But those little surprise <laughs> and delight things that make you happy you bought the car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway, all right. Easy one probably for both of you. Infotainment. We'll start with you. I like, already I like, to it. I like infotainment. Best and worst. I think the... The bet, I mean, there's several of them that are pretty good. Right. I think mm -hmm. I think Ford is pretty straightforward. Yep. You know, it's it's you're not spending a whole lot of time with the manual trying to figure stuff out. And yep. even their newest system that you see, like you know, in the in the the the, the Ford Mustang Mach E, mm -hmm. you know, it's got more real estate. There's like a knob on there. Right. I, I think it's there's well some good laid ideas out. there. Some good ideas. The worst, I got to say, Mercedes Benz, just yeah. in general, the capacitive switches everywhere, the menus upon menus, and just the it's over intense. and like they even have these things where you could change the colors of the lights and the menu and, <laughs> that is and whatever. A bonus. And, you know, like well, they should have like you know red and green. You know, where that's they probably the easiest thing to do. You can't you can't change your mirrors, but well, you can surely well, that's set the, the ambient issue, color. Right? Yeah. You know, and yeah. sometimes all that stuff is accessible, but the <laughs> stuff you need is right. like right, which right, menu right. was that again? Yeah. All right, so best I have Hyundai. Yeah, I think, that would be yeah. my answer. It's just, just simple. It. simple. It doesn't seem to matter which car you're in. They've built enough processing power in there where it's not mm -hmm. freezing on you. And it just works really <laughs> well, which gets very frustrating yes. in certain cars. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's really easy to use. I did have a runner up Honda, believe it or not. I think older Hondas, like no way. But right. in the oh, new, yeah. like in the Civic and the, yeah. the CRV, it's just. Right, you already said it. Not yeah. because it's the best in terms of the features, but it's so simple that yeah. it just, dis yeah, there's right. no opportunity yeah. for distraction almost because of how simple it is. Um, and worst, I gotta, I gotta say GTI ID4 with uh, Volkswagen. Oh, that's so, so disappointing. Tiny. And they were so good. The last generation was so good <laughs> and so simple. Completely. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, they've already in the news lately just talked about trying to revert some of that stuff and like bring back hard buttons. And they totally realized that that didn't go as planned. So yeah, yeah, it did not work. I right. said, we had a ratings meeting yesterday. You guys have heard it, but not the audience. And I said, maybe the Germans have better eyes than I do because there's some trend. Mercedes is one mm -hmm. where everything's so tiny. Yeah. The screen's like, this big, but the button you're looking for <laughs> you got all this here. white space, but these tiny, tiny selections. So <laughs> yeah. I agree. And it's leading to the, my favorite trend. So okay. I cheated because I can cheat because I make the rules. But that Model S just sets the worst. 
and I know that's not 2022, that's why I'm cheating. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's leading to my favorite trend, so I'm gonna go first, which is personalization. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. The ability, be it the ambient lighting, of the things that you use most, and we don't get to take advantage of that personalization as much because we're swapping cars all the time. Mm -hmm. But the ability to set your screen, now that the screen's there, like you would your phone, yeah. of the things you use most often and mm -hmm. need most often. And tailor, that's my favorite trend. Yeah, nice. This that's tailoring good, that's of, be it performance, the way it drives, <clears throat> do I want comfort, do I want sport, do yeah. I want eco, or where do I want my seat heater? I want it right there mm -hmm. and making it super accessible and where I know where it is all the time. Again, we don't get that advantage, but people who own these vehicles mm -hmm. get that advantage. Trends. Yeah, my favorite trend, and I alluded to it with the Civic a little bit, but is kind of the return to more simple exterior styling yeah. of cars. I Not feel so like angular. Is that yeah, what you just, mean? Yeah, just there's so much over styling going on mm -hmm. with cuts and lines and mm -hmm. vents that don't go anywhere or do anything. <laughs> And you look at something like the Civic or even the CRV um, and some other vehicles outside of Honda as well, but it's just cleaner surfaces. Yeah. Just it looks a little more, you know, subtle. I don't need all the flashy stuff. So, do you like the honeycomb accents on the inside of the? Yeah. Zone? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that's I like good honeycomb too. I like the honeycomb too. <laughs> Actually, honeycombs the cereal. <laughs> yes. No, just kidding. Favorite trend feature. Um, well, similar to your 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 point about personalization, it's it's actually kind of like. It's, it's the apps and the integration yeah. into your life. So like, you know, just about every new car comes with an app and some are mm -hmm. okay, yeah. and kind of take the place of your key, but some actually are pretty, pretty integrated. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about that, it's like, you know, this is the integration, like you hop in your car and you're setting your nav system or setting any one of these multitude of features. Why right. not allow me to go and do it when I'm on my couch before I get into my car? Yeah. Let mm -hmm. me set my navigation system. Let me, let me go let it know the places I'm going to go today. Because the problem is, is that all this customization, all this stuff is a crazy distraction to do while you're driving. Yeah, Why not, not offboard it yeah. so I can now make these modifications? You know, I, I, I sit here on my phone and I could go and, you know, customize the background on my phone at my leisure. Mm -hmm. Right. With a car, now right. you're customizing these things while you're driving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a huge, almost untapped opportunity to offboard that stuff. Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting point. Love it. I, I and we're seeing it. On mm -hmm. that too, for people who aren't as savvy. So if, say, I buy mm -hmm. my 85-year-old mother, who I talk about all the time, the newest car, mm -hmm. I can go in, yeah. like I take her phone yeah. and put all her most used items on that front screen, I can say, Mom, here's where you do you, your climate. You could, here's where you make a phone call. Here's where you do If she's that. going somewhere, you could set her nav Absolutely. for her. So From it's all phone. set. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Car you wish would come back in 2023 go <laughs> you might have the same answer for this. the evolution the lancer evolution <laughs> yeah. no well partially true um i'm not gonna i'm gonna cheat I'm not gonna say car but it's just vtech yo i mean yeah, yeah. There, i mean there was a time yeah. when right. we had cars without turbochargers that revved you to 8000 yeah. 9000 yeah, 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 rpm yeah, yeah. or silky smooth and you they didn't have a lot of torque but when you wanted it you revved it up and you had to work and yeah, it was yeah, fun yeah. to drive yep those days are gone. Yeah. yeah Those days much. are really gone, yeah. and I miss, I miss that. Yeah, I don't think there's really any car I can think of off the top of my head that, you know, has that type of characteristic. No. Um, yeah, uh, I hope that the MR2 comes back. <laughs> yeah, I, you should have said that. I, I was, and I crossed it off. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you figure, yeah, okay. Yeah. So maybe it'll be electric or something, which would be cool. That'd be, you know, an electric small light, maybe light. Yeah. would be cool. Sports car, but. Um, yeah, just a Toyota sports car that is developed through and through right. by Toyota. Right. So not the GR, not the Supra. Those are great, but you know, let's yeah. see what Toyota can do with they, it. They used right. to do it, and mm -hmm. they made some really, really good yeah. cars in the past. And actually, they're talking about you know trying to put a stick shift in an electric car. And I think uh, that yeah. could be done really, really <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Because yeah. right now, we're always not dealing with all this like different modes and power modes and regen. Mm -hmm. You actually could simulate a lot of that stuff and control it really well from mm -hmm. what they a lever between the seats? Something. Yeah, Craziness. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Crazy talk. Yeah. Craziness. <laughs> Mine, easy. Ford Flex. Love that car. <laughs> Love that car. The carni Carnival. The Carnival comes close. It is close. Yeah. Mm. Ford Flex. I think it's so utilitarian. Hmm. I told so many friends to buy it, and I want to buy it one day, and it's going like to be long buying gone. A sh it's like driving a shed. It's like driving <laughs> a square shed. It's like driving a box. Yes. <laughs> but it works so well. 
Well, talk about luxurious room. Anyway, I've said it many times before. <laughs> you can make well. fun of me in the episode. comments <laughs> below. Yes, yes, yes. The word yes. flex. Okay. Car that you wish would go away <clears throat> in 2023. Me? Yeah. <sighs> well, I mean, I'm I'm thinking about just even the, the new vehicles, like the Wagoneer. Yeah. <laughs> Why on earth in 2022 are we launching a car that gets 15 miles per gallon? Uh, yeah. What, what's going on? And, and it's not like, I'm not saying there's not a need for large vehicles for right. people who need them, but yeah, there's other the vehicles that are available. Yeah, Ford Flex. But I mean, <laughs> but I mean, there's other vehicles available of that size that get much better fuel economy. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, yeah. we should not be in today's age. People demand more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when a when a BMW X7 can get, you know, 22, 23 miles per gallon. Yeah. Why is, is a lot or different. or suburban is getting more more fuel economy? Yeah. It just seems like And large families really? need the car, but not necessarily that level of Yeah. It's not just that it's big. They, they, mm -hmm. they, if you got that big family, you can't afford to pay for all that gas. No, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, VTech wagon. Various <laughs> Uh, similar, actually, I kind of want the Hummer EV to go away because I just don't think that that's <laughs> yeah. at all the point of yeah. what They're we're trying to do here. Point, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Even if it wasn't an EV, it's still 10,000 pounds for or 9,000 yeah, pounds for, for no reason. Over the top. I just yeah. don't think that's the, the right direction. Right direction. Yeah. As cool as it may be. So here's mine. And then this was where I said you were cheating on my notes is the Jaguar <clears throat> E-Pace. And I'm saying the Jaguar mm. E-Pace not just because of the Jaguar U-Pace, but the whole segment. And you already alluded to it. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. right, right. entry-level <clears throat> compact SUV category. So you got a $48,000 car that scores really low. Mm -hmm. So no, but the people who bought it don't like it. The owner satisfaction is low. The reliability is low because you spend a lot of money for a car that doesn't give you a lot of room, doesn't give you... Um, great performance all it did was say jaguar on it yeah yeah and that whole segment you look at it the highest rated vehicle in that segment is rated lower than just move to the next level where you got x3s and macans and you know you know uh gv70s great cars mm -hmm. It's the next segment up. Right. Probably yeah. a lot of price overlap mm -hmm. where you can get a much better vehicle, still get your luxury experience and be really happy. Right. The owner satisfaction in that next group is so, so, so much just, better. It's just, you know, you want a luxury brand, you right. want an SUV, you wind up with these really cramped, not very good SUVs yeah. Yeah. for a lot of money. And it's like, it's not a real smart place to be. Right. There's lots of better options. Yeah. yeah. So the right. Jaguar E-Pace is just a representative <clears throat> sure. of that mm -hmm. segment. Yeah. Right. Only the Mini Cooper Countryman has even owner satisfaction that's above hmm. average only. And, and that's the highest rated. One. And we've said this before, but like if you're, if you're interested in that type of thing and you kind of, you forego the badge, but yeah. just get a really nice version of a lower level. Well, vehicle, you already right? said that. Yes. yes. Right. Get your Pathfinder. Yeah. Your just get the pathfinder. loaded Pathfinder and save yep. a little bit um, rather than going for like a lower level uh, QX60. Yep. Or yeah. something similar. Yeah. Or, or if you are, you know, even if you want that, like go slightly higher. I mean, like, yes. Yes. Yeah, right. Like a, yeah, exactly. Get just an one X3. Level. Or, or even like a yeah. like a Lexus, you know. Yeah. You know. Don't get the UX. Get the RX. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm, or the RDX. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Accurate RDX or whatever Acura that RDX next group or, is. Yeah. Or the NX. The NX Lexus right. is not a whole lot more. You right. Know, That's what I think in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this next segment's a little bit of a quiz. I had to go to John Ibbotson, our shop supervisor, who manages where the cars go all the time, as well as what gets repaired. What car do you think was the most coveted? What one did we fight over and go to John and say, I want, I want, I want. What car? Go quick. Corvette. <laughs> yes. That's one. But <laughs> Any, there was two and he said for very oh, different okay. reasons. Anything with a bed. Any yeah. pickup truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly the answer. It was the Corvette and the Ford F-150s. Yep. We had multiple. Mm. But yeah. It very, was similar. The, very similar. Very similar vehicles. <laughs> very yeah. right? similar the driving Rear-wheel drive, V8 engines, the same thing. But it just shows you <laughs> the utility versus the fun. Yeah. And yeah, those were the two. And... The most problem prone. What car in our fleet in 22 spent the most time back and forth to the dealer? And I will say he included in his answer recalls, which mm. it's not what we ask in reliability. Don't, don't tell me it was the same two cars. Right. And it was <laughs> and it was recalls, you know, some of the time, but also issues. 
It was the F-150. Oh, really? It was the same. Well, because oh. we put too many miles on yeah, it. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> too much use. Uh, I don't think too I've seen use. our Santa Cruz in like six months, so I don't know where that one's yeah, at. Yeah, that's the next second. <laughs> that was running second. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cars with a bed. They had some issues. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. A lot of new trends, new technologies. Still great vehicles. Still some not so great vehicles. But to mm -hmm. your point, I think in general, when you think of what we drove at, when we were younger and now, you know, it's it's like a... We take it for granted how great they are. Hmm. So as we close 22, anything you're really, really looking forward to in 2023? Yeah, I'm really hoping the Cybertruck comes out. Ah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward well, to. It might, yeah. and that'll yeah. be cool. So That'll be cool. Jake, any... Well, I heard I heard that there's an MR2 coming. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw some rumors around. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for the Maverick siblings. Uh, I want to see a whole family go. of Mavericks. That's yep. what I want to see. See, so I wasn't so off the mark with okay. my Maverick. And I think there's other, you know, one thing, Jake, you and I certainly talk about outside of talking cars is um, fuel cell vehicles. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be, you're going to certainly talk of some more. Yeah, yeah there is. Um, recently, and, too. Yeah, more recently. And and will we see some more, um, oh. more re less so in California and more more across the country Actual and, infrastructure and infrastructure right. go well, with it, or, which is one of the issues fuel we fuel cell face. you know long haul trucks yes. you know i mean yeah. there's huge opportunities yeah mm -hmm. so i i think we may see that so as we close not only this segment but 2022 thank you all for listening for watching all of our episodes hopefully you had a happy healthy holiday um, wishing you all the best in 2023. We will be here soon. Um, and happy new year. This, uh, keep your questions. Oh, I'm almost forgetting. All of your question videos, please ask them and critique my Ford Flex at <laughs> talkingcars at iCloud.com. This episode, as always, is filmed and edited by David Abrams, Andrew Belise, and Anatoly Shumsky. And we'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs>